Three to five favorite Maggie in this grade one spin away. Maggie standing by with this paddock report. And that's a bit of a far cry from the four to one that she was first time out. And embarrassingly enough, I wasn't in love with her in the paddock that day. I'm with that price that she was first time out. Neither was everybody else. But, um, whoa, I just looked up and saw that uh, Travis Stone, uh, who does a simulcasting, uh, picked the one I'm going to talk about in a second here. Um, as Echo Zulu, I didn't think she looked that fit that day. Uh, she has definitely progressed. She is tucked up quite a bit, um, and she's so much stronger just across her top line. The thing with her that I question the most, does she get better with more ground? She's going from the five and a half to the seven. She is by Practical Joke, who was a more proficient sprinter, albeit he did win um, the grade one hopeful that we'll see at seven furlongs tomorrow. I don't know at this time of, of year if she does. I think she's facing um, a better field, a more challenging field than what she did. Number one, Tarabi. I am just drooling over her here for Cherie DeVoe, who has had an excellent meet with limited starters. She seems to know what she's bringing here. I love the way that she won at Ellis Park. She attended the pace, and when Colby Hernandez just opened his hands a bit, she accelerated. She was not asked for that much. She is a big, athletic, scopey filly. She's handling herself with the utmost professionalism. I like Tarabi. As another one coming, by the way, the pea patch is number two, girl with a dream. She ran well, though, though it was at 5'8". Two more furlongs to accomplish today. She comes in here well turned out for uh, trainer Brad Cox. She's small and compact, though. I don't think she gets better with more ground. And then number seven, Dream Lith. She has progressed quite nicely with a start under, under her belt. I want. I like the extra ground for her. She is a lot sharper, though. She knows what's going on. She's gotten a bit hot under the collar. But the physicality, she has gone on so much with a start under her belt. 36 to 1, debut winner, and now in a grade one, Dream Lift, 8 to 1 for the spin away. But this was Echo Zulu Gary on opening day. As Maggie mentioned, 4 to 1 at post time, and then she went out there and did this. J.K. Paul, Echo Zulu, what were you guys so impressed with by her performance on opening day? Well, I'll tell you one thing that I'm impressed with now is Maggie saying that she didn't think she looked that fit that day. If she wasn't fit that day, I don't want to see her run when she is fit because, man, she was impressive. She was fast early in here, and she opened up finishing her race with one of those Saturday Saratoga Maidens where everyone in there was supposed to be good. Yeah, and you can see her tired Santana a couple times. He flagged her a couple times with the crop, but he was looking behind, in between, underneath his legs. And, Gary, that's got to be a great feeling when you're on a filly like that. Yeah, it's a great feeling when you hit the 16th pole. And you finally ask them for their best and their first time start and they burst away from the crowd like she did. And hey, the filly that was third, uh, what, about uh, six, seven lengths behind her, she came back and won as well. Time for the two-year-old race of the day, brought to you by Spendthrift Farm, home of two-time reigning champion sire into mischief. The 130th running of the grade one spin away. There's Tarabi. Some good vibes from Maggie in the paddock. Yeah, one really nice first time out. It's going to have to improve. You do get Javier Castellano aboard for Cherie DeVos having a monster meet. She's great. Already really has a win on the card. Girl with a dream. Florent Giroux aboard. Yeah, she ran well at Ellis Park. The speed figure wasn't that fast, though. Uh, I'm, I'm worried she's in deeper waters. Echo Zulu, exciting, fast filling. Yeah, really fast. 92 buyer. Um, is the, one of the highest numbers of two-year-olds, Phillies or Colts. Second fastest this year. More on that in a moment. Ben Bang would be a shock. Yeah, I mean, she's got a lot of early speed, so it wouldn't be the biggest shock in the world. And plus, the trainer's got an awesome name. <laughs> <laughs> pretty birdie, wire-to-wire Skylerville winner. <laughs> yeah, you got to love the colors of Mary Lou Whitney here for Norm Cassie. Looking for, for three in the most. The most experienced runner in the race besides this one. Saucy Lady T, twice graded stakes place. Not bad for a $5,000 purchase. Yeah, but she's, she's had some trouble with the gate. She's going to need to break away from there clean if she wants to beat these horses. Dream Lith, Cohen, Diodoro. Can they go back to back? Yeah, 36 to 1 last time, 8 to 1 this time, and she was impressive. Sequist by Nyquist, just like Vequist last year. I mean, what more do you need for the hunch play there? <laughs> if you like her. At 29 to 1, far outside, Sue Ellen Mishkin, another fast filly, more fuel to the fire. Yeah, a New York bread that's not taking any play, Lafitte, but when you win by seven and a quarter lengths, open lengths, you got to have a little bit of quality. So 13 to 1, you're getting your price. Field. 
for Saratoga's most prestigious race for two-year-old Phillies grade one spin away. Another look at Sequist for West Point Thoroughbreds. Terry Finley standing by with Acacia. That's right, and a filly that has already shown she can come from off the pace. Poor break, five furlongs, closing like she did. Does that give you some confidence as she gets a little bit more ground to work with, Terry? So I think the I think the extra distance will help us. You know, a lot of speed in the race, and uh, I, I think it should set up well for us. And uh, we'll be sitting there. And I just hope we have the turn of foot that we had a couple weeks ago at a Colonial Downs. But she's a very uh, she's a quality filly. She's a night coast filly. And uh, Dallas Stewart actually bought her for us uh, at the September sale. So all the partners are very excited. I, I know they're watching across the country. So uh, let's uh, see if we can get the job done. And she looks like a filly that'll do some more distance. Uh, wish you the best of luck, Terry, with her. Absolutely. Thank you very much. You, you, you know, I, I was told to give a shout out to my grandkids in, in uh, Kentucky. So I just want to say hello to Blake and uh, McKenna. Love that they're watching, too. Good luck to the whole West Point team. Lafitte. How cool is that for Blake and McKenna? It'd be that much cooler. Sequist pulls off this big upset, Gary. Can she do it? Absolutely. Uh, hey, listen, when they're two year olds, uh, they, they can improve in leaps and bounds. And Sequist, she's got the pedigree. Uh, and listen, Dallas Stewart, he's knocked off some big shots <laughs> over the years uh, at big prices. And, um, you know, Nyquist is get, gets runners. Junior Alvarado uh, is finishing up the meet here. Uh, really well. Struggled early on in the meet, but uh, he's had a good meet as well. West Point Thoroughbreds, Dallas Stewart, 50 to 1, runner up effort in a Kentucky Derby. Commanding curve years back, guys. Pretty birdie, however, not that big of a price. She's a current second choice, 7 to 2. This wire to wire win in the Schuylerville, but it was aided by another fast quality Philly who did not get out of the blocks cleanly. Yeah, I get it, but, you know, Pretty Birdie took advantage of it. And we've been going over the top 10 moments of the meet this was my top moment of the meet jk mm -hmm. just because the way mary lou whitney colors what she means honestly you and i would not be sitting here if it wasn't for mary lou whitney absolutely it was it was uh it was a great way to start the meet and you know obviously excited for norm as well as he's uh still at the infancy of his career on his own pretty birdie's interesting because she has a lot of early speed and she's drawn outside of echo zulu so if pretty birdie wants to impact this race I, I think she can um her she didn't come home nearly as fast as echo, echo zulu did but one thing i realized is these two-year-olds they can progress they can continue to improve and it seems like pretty birdie has been working well and she can't be upset about her draw outside of her main competition the three echo zulu was a great moment opening day fans back at saratoga mary lou whitney colors in the winner's circle, and it's been a terrific meet for that jockey right there. Ricardo Santana, already three grade one wins, Gary, at the meet. That big upset, Maracuja Coaching Club, American Oaks. Yopon, of course, getting savaged and still winning. And yesterday, Max Player in the Jockey Club Gold Cup, seeking a fourth now with Echo Zulu. No, it's been a great meet.